Hey, everyone. You know, sometimes I wonder, like, can ancient philosophy really help us navigate our crazy modern lives? Hmm. Interesting question. That's what we're diving into today, Stoicism. We're exploring this idea of how to not just live a good life, but a great life, all thanks to this excerpt from uh, The Highest Good, an introduction to the four Stoic virtues. And what's really cool about this is it lays out this framework for living and it's not about like self-deprivation or anything like that yeah it's definitely not about giving up all your worldly possessions and living on a mountaintop right it's more like a, a philosophy crash course stoic style yeah. on how to unlock more happiness and freedom love it okay so stoicism where do we even begin well the stoics were all about virtue they believed that living virtuously was the key to unlocking as they called it some bonum which essentially means the highest good. So Mumbonum has a nice ring to it, doesn't it? It does. And it's not just some abstract idea either. The Stoics were very practical. They were all about, you know, putting these virtues into practice in your daily life as the path to, you know, really achieving happiness. It's like their motto was, don't just think about it, be about it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay, so ready to dive into the first virtue. Let's do it. Lay it on me. All right, first up, wisdom. Okay, so when we talk about wisdom, we're not just talking about like being the smartest person in the room or knowing a bunch of random trivia. That's right, it's much deeper than that. Oh. For the Stoics, wisdom really comes down to this. Recognizing the difference between what you can and cannot control. Ooh, that's a big one. And it's so easy to get caught up in trying to control everything. <laughs> it is, but the Stoics would say, that's a recipe for frustration and unhappiness. This reminds me of that Epictetus quote. Uh, how does it go? <laughs> Something like, the chief task in life is simply this. To identify in separate matters, so that I can say clearly to myself which are externals, not under my control, and which have to do with the choices I actually control. Yes. And then he goes on to say, where then do I look for good and evil? Not to uncontrollable externals, but within myself to the choices that are my own. Boom. Mic drop. That's some serious wisdom right there. Right. And, you know, it, it makes me think of Viktor Frankl, you know, that quote, between stimulus and response, there is a space. In that space is our power to choose our response. That space is where Stoic wisdom comes to life. It's about, you know, taking what we know and applying it, especially when things get tough. So it's not just about knowing the difference between what you can and can't control. It's about actually using that knowledge to make choices. Exactly. Okay, so let's say, you know, your boss dumps a ton of work on you right before you're supposed to head out on vacation. Oh, I've been there. The worst, right. <laughs> so how do you use that space that Frankel was talking about to choose a wiser response? Well, instead of letting the stress, you know, totally hijack your system, you can take a breath. Prioritize what absolutely needs to be done before you leave mm. and maybe even delegate some of it. Yeah, that's a much better approach than, you know, frantically trying to do it all yourself and then having a panic attack on the beach. Right. It's about recognizing what you can and can't control in that moment no. and focusing your energy where it matters most. Okay, so that's wisdom. But what about, you know, those everyday frustrations that we all experience, like being stuck in traffic, for example? Yeah, those can be tough. Instead of letting the frustration get to you, Maybe you use that time to listen to, you know, an inspiring podcast. Like this one. Exactly. Yeah. See, you're already a stoic pro. Yeah. But seriously, it's about making choices that keep you moving forward. Which reminds me, we have to talk about the next virtue. Temperance. And this is where people sometimes get the wrong idea about stoicism. Yeah, they think it's all about deprivation. Like giving up everything you enjoy in life. Yeah. But it's really not about that. It's more about balance. Think of Aristotle's golden mean. Oh yeah, the sweet spot, right. Exactly. It's about finding that sweet spot between excess and deficiency. About aligning your actions with what truly matters. Okay, so not deprivation, but dot moderation. Exactly. God. It's about, you know, really asking yourself, what do I really need in this moment? Hmm, good question. What does one really need? And maybe more importantly, what can I do without? Right, and I think that's especially relevant today. You know, we're constantly bombarded with messages to do more, have more, be more. But the Stoics remind us that sometimes the path to, you know, real tranquility is about doing less. Doing less, but better. Exactly. It's about saying no to the things that don't align with your values. So you can say yes to what truly matters. Exactly. Which, let's be honest, is a lot easier said than done. Oh, absolutely. But like anything worth doing, it takes practice. So true. And this isn't just about like material things either, right? Absolutely not. Yeah. It applies to how we react to 
you know, everything life throws at us. So finding that inner balance. Yes. And not getting too caught up in the highs and lows, knowing that, you know, this too shall pass. It's about cultivating that, you know, steady inner peace. Okay, I can get behind that. Inner peace is a good look on everyone. But what about when things get really tough? You know, when we need to dig deep and find that dot courage. And this is where that classic image of the brave knight comes to mind. But I'm guessing stoic courage is a bit more nuanced than just, you know, charging into battle. You got it. Stoic courage isn't about, you know, physical strength or fighting prowess. It's about moral courage, having the strength to stand up for what you believe in, even when it's hard, even when it's unpopular, or even when everyone else thinks you're, you know, a little bit crazy. It's like that saying, do the right thing, even when no one is watching. Exactly. And sometimes, you know, that means speaking truth to power, which takes serious guts. Oh, for sure. Think about Thracy, for example. Thracy? Yeah, he openly challenged the Emperor Nero. Oh, wow. Talk about putting everything on the line. Right. I mean, that's, that's some next level courage right there. It's one thing to, like, disagree with your boss, but to stand up to a tyrant like Nero, that's a whole other level. It really is. Yeah. And, you know, it's, it's such a powerful example of moral courage, but it doesn't always have to be these, you know, grand historical gestures. Okay, I'm listening. What about, like, everyday courage? Right. Think about, for instance, the Percy family from the American South. Oh, yeah. I've heard of them. Talk about facing down hardship and injustice. Yeah. Leroy Percy, he took on the Ku Klux Klan back in the 1920s, right? He did. And his son, William Alexander Percy, he adopted his young cousins after their parents died, which, you know, it doesn't sound like this big, huge act of courage, but back then, especially expanding your family in that way, it came with, you know, some social backlash. Oh, I bet people could be so judgmental. Yeah. And then you have Walker Percy. Who was? He was William Alexander's cousin. And he used his writing to, you know, fight against prejudice and intolerance. So each generation of that family, they kind of lived out stoic courage in their own way. See, you don't have to be a famous philosopher or a historical figure to embody these virtues. It's really about, like you said, those everyday decisions to act according to your values. Yeah. Even when it's difficult. Exactly. And, you know, thinking about more historical figures, I mean, imagine the inner strength it took someone like Marcus Aurelius to try to be a good ruler in a corrupt system. Oh, totally. He was trying to live by these virtues, surrounded by people who, let's be honest, probably didn't even care about them. Exactly. I mean, they would... You know, throw those virtues out the window for, you know, power, personal gain, whatever it took. It's a lot easier to go with the flow, isn't it? Oh, for sure. But the Stoics would say, that's not really living, is it? No, I guess not. <laughs> so when we talk about Stoic courage, we're really talking about that inner battle too, like staying true to yourself, even when it's easier to just give in. Yes. It's about showing up with your best self, no matter what. And sometimes your best is like standing up to an emperor and sometimes it's just, you know, making it through another day. Exactly. We all face our own battles. Okay, so we've covered wisdom, temperance, courage. What's next on our stoic virtue checklist? Well, that brings us to, I'd say, maybe the most important stoic virtue. Look at me. Justice. Justice. Even Marcus Aurelius himself called justice the source of all the other virtues. He did. And you know, it kind of makes sense when you really think about it. Like, yeah. justice is that foundation. It's the bedrock upon which all the other virtues can kind of rest. Okay, I like that. Justice as the foundation. But what does that actually mean, like, practically speaking? Well, it really comes down to this. Mm -hmm. Recognizing that we are all interconnected. That we are, you know, part of something much larger than ourselves. It's like we're not just individuals. We're part of a community, a society, a whole planet. Exactly. And the Stoics even had this concept of like cosmopolitanism which is it's this belief that we are all essentially citizens of the world bound together by our shared humanity i love that and it's so relevant especially today when we're more connected than ever it is you know like what happens in one part of the world affects us all totally so how did the stoics define justice in a practical sense well cicero he was a roman order yeah and he talked about not harming others hmm, makes sense using shared resources responsibly and, you know, working together for the common good. Okay, yeah, that's something I think we can all get behind. It's not about, like, being a saint. It's about recognizing our shared humanity and just, like, treating each other accordingly. Which brings us back to why we're talking about Stoicism in the first place. Right. It's not just some ancient philosophy that's, you know, lost its relevance. Yeah, it's not about togas and scrolls. Exactly. It's about recognizing what you can control your choices, your actions, 
and focusing on aligning those with these four virtues. Wisdom, temperance, courage, justice. Exactly. It's like having this internal compass yeah. to, you know, help you navigate the ups and downs of life. And even when the world feels, you know, completely chaotic and unpredictable. Which, let's be honest, is a lot of the time these days. It is. But you still have the power to choose how you respond. You can choose virtue. And in doing so, you find freedom. Exactly. I love that. This has been such a thought-provoking conversation. Like, what if we all you know, or at least more of us, made a conscious effort to live by these virtues. Now, let's imagine. How would that change our daily interactions, our decision-making, our world? It's a beautiful thing to consider. It's not about being perfect. You know, we're all human. We're all a work in progress. Totally. But every step we take toward, you know, aligning our lives with these virtues, it not only benefits us individually, but it kind of, you know, ripples outwards to those around us. I love that. A ripple effect. So for anyone listening who's feeling inspired to, you know, dive a little deeper into stoicism, what's the best way to do that? Well, the excerpt we've been talking about, the highest good, an introduction to the four stoic virtues. It's a great starting point. And of course, you know, there are countless other books and articles, podcasts, all exploring Stoic philosophy. And don't forget the ancient texts themselves. Yes. Marcus Aurelius, Epictetus, Seneca. I mean, they might seem a little, I don't know, dense at first. Yeah. But there's some real gems of wisdom in there. It's true. And just remember, it's a journey, not a destination. So keep exploring, keep questioning, and most importantly, just keep striving to live a life of virtue. Beautifully said. Until next time, everyone. Keep diving. Craving final harmony The memory of everything Overwhelmed in time In the rock ballad we find the climb Do not indulge in dreams Wrecking up the blessings true In the rock rhythm find us in you Read with diligence Not a superficial sound In the rock verse let the wisdom resound